Congratulations on the rowing team. That's amazing. Yeah, it was the first time women rowers were allowed at the Olympic Games. And uh, it was an interesting journey, certainly. And uh, we got there and realized that they decided that we should row exactly half the distance the men row. Nice. Not really, because all the men were uh, <laughs> rat, knew about rowing two kilometers instead of one kilometer. So we trained for 2K, and we raced 1K. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, what made you decide to do that, to become a rower? Well, uh, you know, it was in college. I, I was crossing the campus one day at a certain time, and I saw this thing that I'd never seen before. I went over to ask what it was, and the man there said, it's rowing, and you'd be perfect for it. And I said, OK, now there's a line. I hadn't been perfect for anything. <laughs> I said, well, I have to do. And he said, do you swim? I said, yes, yeah, since I was four. He says, OK, meet me at this parking lot at 5.30 AM next Monday. 5.30 AM. Not doing anything else at 5:30, so why yeah. not? And I loved it. It's a sport where you do no harm to any of your competitors or teammates. You put the water right back where you got it on each stroke, yeah. and uh, you're outside. It can be cold, but you're outside in the environment. Amazing. And so you are an attorney and and uh, activist. What is a civil rights attorney? Well, generally, it means that you work usually for a public interest firm or for a part of a, a law firm that specifically has perhaps pro bono or an, a, a practice in civil rights or organizations that do civil rights like the ACLU, the NAACP, or in my case, the Juvenile Law Center of Philadelphia where I started my legal career. Oh, I see. And what, is, uh, what are civil rights? Civil rights are those rights that we are given under the Constitution of the United States of America, although it's been begrudgingly since we started out as three-fifths of a human, but slowly with the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, there are rights, and then with the Civil Rights Act of the mid-60s, and more to be done for certain. But Can you uh, name a civil right, like what, for an example? Well, we have the right to free speech, and that's supposed to be against your government. For example, you can't say fire in a movie theater right. just because you want to. So uh, the right to free speech is the right to uh, protest against the government. Um, there's a right to, uh, you know, to a peaceful life, uh, one that you don't have to constantly battle yourself for yourself. There's a right, I believe, to education. I believe there's a right to being a fully formed human. I mean, we are one race, the human race. We're all the same, right. and yet each of us is unique. Even identical twins are not identical. So if we could get that R-A-C-E word out of our mind, everything would be a lot better. But what I, I noticed that most of these blacks, so-called civil rights and ACLU and all that, they're fighting for things that we already have. We have the right to speak. We have the Second Amendment. We have those things. But when they go out and fight, they fight for the wrong thing. Like they fight for uh, lesbians and homosexuals to uh, be accepted as a norm. Uh, those are not civil rights. Those are immoral issues. No. Why would they fight for immoral issues like that? Absolutely. You get to have that opinion if you wish. But, but we're all humans. And how we present ourselves to the world is our own individual decision. It's not my right to say something is immoral. Uh, it's but it only, is your right to say that. I can say that, but I, as long as I don't hurt someone by right, saying that. Right, you can that. say it, but you don't have to beat them. You told Hopper to beat me. You don't have to beat them, but you can totally and firmly disagree. That is our responsibility. Yeah, disagreement's a good thing. And so they're fighting for immoral rights rather than well, civil rights. You've decided that it's immoral. I've decided it's civil rights because every person is unique, and we need to respect and appreciate that uniqueness. So anything that a person want to do, they have a civil right to do it. So long as it doesn't in put injury into someone else's way or, to a certain extent, and not injure themselves. Do these people have the right to brainwash the children about immoral lifestyles? 
I refuse to accept the notion that you're presenting of something being immoral. It's judged by, you know, you can, you can believe that, but it's not my place to say yes or no on something that you believe is immoral and I believe is a civil right. Do you know right from wrong? Well, uh, yeah, I generally do. <laughs> I decide what's right and what's wrong. How do you decide? Myself. Are you God? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not. So how do you make that? <laughs> Sometimes I wish, I wish I could wave a magic wand or something to get things right. In so this how world. do you decide right from wrong? Well, I have a moral compass. And, and where do you get that from? Well, probably from upbringing. I am a fourth generation of civil rights activists in my family. It's been a long haul. My great grandfather was a part of the Pap Singleton movement, the Exodusters, as they were called. My grandfather had what I always thought that was so funny, monster meetings every February in Indianapolis at the Senate Avenue YMCA. But the reason they were called monster meetings is because they were so large. And each year he'd bring in top people from our skin tone community. Uh, my father got to meet W.B. Du Bois, George Washington Carver, and other, other literati. Um, and, uh, that brought it to uh, Indianapolis, which my father described as the northernmost southern town. There was extreme racism, bad word, I shouldn't use it, discrimination. <laughs> I thought you wanted to get rid of that I word. do, so I apologize for not you're, you're behaving well. Thank you. Babe. So listen, um, do, so do you fight for the wrong things too? Uh, define wrong. Like bad lifestyle, like homosexuality and Let's run and well, again, all this crap. Again, yeah. You fight for those things? I think fight for humans to have the life that they need. Do you fight for... Uh, Actually, I don't fight. I work to convince. To convince a right person that wrong is right and right is wrong? No. A person <laughs> that we all deserve to live. We are all human and we are one race, the human race. Are you a Christian? I, yes, I was brought up in the Christian, <laughs> Christian tradition. My father was Episcopalian, my mother was Southern Baptist, so we grew up Presbyterians. <laughs> and so you are a Christian? <laughs> yes. Sir. And what does it mean to be a Christian to you? Well, for me, it might be a little different from other people, but I accept that there is a higher force. Uh, I don't accept that it's necessarily a male. I accept that we need to live together and respect one another. I, expect, I, I respect the notion of do unto others as you would have done to yourself. I respect the notion that there is enough in this world and we should not keep people from having what they need. It's wrong. This is a wrong to have children go to bed hungry. That's, That's just a parent's plain responsibility. Wrong. If they have parents. Right, they have to have parents. They don't well, just at fall one out point, of the sky. Well, at right? one point they had parents, absolutely. <laughs> But if the parents aren't able to do what is necessary for the kids, other people should make sure that kids are fed and loved. If they and can't loved. feed the baby, they shouldn't have the baby. Well, that's a little bit after the fact if we're talking <laughs> about babies. <laughs> um, so you, um, you don't believe God is a he? No. You believe, why, he's, why? A, you believe he's a she? I believe or in it, a, a higher what? power. What? and a higher power and can what be described, is described as many things. A, a force that is beyond we paltry humans. But do you believe it's a masculine spirit or a feminine spirit? I believe it's a human spirit. But God is not a human. You, you want things to be one or the other, either right. or. Not necessary. But God is a he. And the, in your you tradition, you agree that the woman came from the man, right? In your tradition, do you believe? And in the tradition well, of the Bible, the Bible, by the way, is written by humans, and mainly men at the time it was written. So I, I get thank it. God, the woman didn't write it. The whole world would be screwed up, right? Oh, maybe not. As we've learned, look that at the world example now. Example on boards of directors: if they have equal men and women, they make much better decisions than those who have. None are only one. So my thought is, of course, you know, you know, the, the Last Supper, you see a woman there in that Was painting. Was she washing the dishes or something? Oh, oh dear. Oh, she was serving the meal? Oh, dear. 
The woman at the Last Supper, was she serving the meal? No, she was sitting there. Was she watching In fact, Jesus we have eat? no idea who served the meal, do we? No, it was already Nobody served. talks about it. Probably some Mexicans. But oh, the, don't do that. No. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no, I'll mess with you. Yeah. But let me ask, do you believe that the woman came from the man? Huh. That's something I'm not sure about. I think we are, are equal. Men and women are equal. Men have certain qualities. Uh, they certainly have the, the, the necessary qualities when, when combined with a woman to make a child. And that's something men only have, and women only have the ability to carry a child and birth the child, so far as we know. And so do you believe the man came from the woman? I'm not sure. I'll I mean, repeat the, myself. the woman came from the man? I'll repeat myself. I'm not sure. Why are you not sure about What kind of Christian are you? You know, I am who I am. Thank you very much. But what type of Christian? You, you Told don't you have I, any I grew Christian up in the, answers. I grew up, well, <laughs> your answers, maybe. <laughs> but they're my answers. I get to share with you my answers. But they taught you wrong. Oh, well, that could happen. Yeah. So let me ask you, you, you contacted me and you wanted to come on the show because you disagreed with me on some things, right? Yeah. Uh, let's get into some of the things you disagree with me we about. We haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> what other things do you disagree with me about? Well, um, you name something for me and then I'll take it on. You don't have anything on mine, in mine? Well, I have lots of things in this mind, but uh, what's your favorite? Peeve well, you the one disagree with me, though, and uh -oh. I'm just, I had you on so I can, I have more questions for you, but okay. I wanted to give you an opportunity to straighten me out or uh, make it clear uh, uh, or what it is that you disagree with. Well, here's my problem. I'm generally an agreeable person, so I don't think about things that uh, I disagree with. I want to learn from you and to understand and help you understand my vision of the way things are. But you said in the video you want to come on to disagree with me, right, Kevin? Yes. To disagree with me. What, what was it at the time when you wanted to come on? Do you remember or you forgot? I forgot. Oh, I'm you. looking at you, and you're such a nice person, and uh, um, I now have you love me. forgotten. Yes. All you have to do is be in my presence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you are very persuasive.